Okay, I'm putting together a quick little video here demonstrating one of the benefits of using 4K footage, capturing 4K footage. And in this case, what I'm doing is I created a project in Final Cut Pro that is 1080p, but I'm using 4K footage. And I'm going to demonstrate here that that allows me to, to cut in quite a bit, to zoom in quite a bit on the subject and not lose quality because I've got four times the real estate to work with in the original image that was captured. The 4K image is 8 megapixels for each frame versus 2 megapixels. So I've got a lot more I can crop in on and still maintain quality. So I'm going to show you how I do this. And again, just to bring you up to speed, what I've done so far is I've downloaded the 4K clips into here. And I even also have some 1080p clips as well. So I'll show you how you can just mix and match. And so I'm going to show you how now I can use the Ken Burns effect and use a cropping effect to to zoom in on my subject and make it look like really I have multiple cameras in the shoot whereas I really only have one camera so let's get at it so I'm going to start with this opening part here Audrey's talking I've been asked a about lot flow. of questions that can sometimes get repetitive in the comment section or asked on hooping live all right so let's say if right there about there i want to i want to cut in on her i'm going to do a, okay, a cut there and a cut here and then i'm just going to select that clip right there i'm going to get my bar over there i'm going to select it and i'm going to use the crop tool here and this in this case i'm going to use the ken burns effect which gives me a start and a stop point and I'm going to zoom in that amount. You can see how much I'm zooming in on her. And I'll say done. Now if I go back and play that back, you'll see it will actually Live. zoom on that and clip. I wanted to make a special video about my journey or my process. So you're doing a nice smooth zoom in there. Nano Hooper. Um, there is a video about that actually that I made a while ago um, that I documented so All that's a nice effect there. Now we're back to the to wide shot. Now what I'm going to do in this next section of this clip, I'm just going to crop in. So this is going to be more like a jump cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to use, I think I use the crop tool. I believe that's what I do. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go in about that amount and say done. Now I'm going to play that back. So it's really cool. Bam, to just and then it just jumps some sort of right to that cropped or image. Video blog or okay, so again, kind of simulating like I have two cameras, like I have a wide camera and a tight shot camera. Okay, and then after that clip, again, it's going to go back to the wide cool. shot. And she leave it on that wide shot for a while. Hula hooping and like doing like the bait like getting up on her shoulders or kind of doing the basic tricks like a vortex and okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do one more time i'm just going to cut here and let's say down to here and i'm going to select that and again i'm going to do the ken burns this time and this one maybe not not come in quite as much as the other one just to give some variety here all right, so again, when I play that back, you're going to see that Ken Burns effect. It's like a vortex. And I remember just being completely enthralled by it, just thinking that so was a cool thing. We're slowly going in here. Because when I was younger, I loved to hula hoop. I was always the girl at recess, and I grabbed the hoops and I did creative things with them. I was the one that was like and so doing it around her neck and, you know, all these. The speed. All these that it's going to go in, zoom in on her, depends on the length of the clip when you're doing the Ken Burns effect because it's going to do that zoom that you selected. It's going to do that for the duration of the clip. So, so if the clip is real long, it's going to be a very slow zooming in. If the clip is shorter, it's going to be faster. So it gives you some flexibility there on some things that you can do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just end this. Let me see. Pick a point here. And so when I saw my friend Hoop, it was this strange moment in my life where I thought, I can do that. And I really, really want to do that. Like, I remember thinking, if I could just be a really good hula hooper, my life would be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to cut it right there. All right. 
and I'm going to delete off the rest of this. And now I'm just going to show you just to demonstrate that I can bring in other clips. I have a slow motion clip here somewhere. Let me see if this is it. No, that's not it. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, okay. So this is a slow motion clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a portion of this. And this was shot in 1080p because my camera, when I'm shooting the 120 frames a second, my camera will only do uh, 1080p. Okay. So this, again, demonstrates the flexibility of Final Cut Pro 10 in that I can bring in the 4K footage and use it in a 1080p timeline and then just bring my 1080p footage right in and just mix and match right on in there. So I can have the flexibility of the 4K footage and allowing me to cut and zoom in like I just demonstrated, but also use my slow motion footage. So let's go ahead and, and just let that play here for a second so you see what that looks like. And, that, and the slow motion footage, by the way, has no audio associated with it. When I use my FZ1000 capturing the slow motion footage, there is no audio captured. So here, let's play some of that just so you see it. My life would be perfect. Okay, so there she is hooping, um, and this was shot at 120 frames a second, and the camera automatically puts it out at 30 frames a second, so it's going to be one quarter of the speed of her actual hooping. And by the way, see more of Audrey at hoopinglive.com. Hoopinglive.com I'll also link in the YouTube description. But again, this, this shows you the flexibility of using Final Cut Pro 10 and capturing some of your footage in 4K and then some of it in 1080p and being able to mix and match all of that together. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will um, append this screencast onto the actual video so that you'll be able to see both. and just amazing to watch Audrey work, isn't it? Just absolutely gorgeous. So until next time, let me know, did you enjoy this little tutorial? Thanks again for watching me and Audrey. Again, hoopinglive.com. I've been asked a lot of questions that can sometimes get repetitive in the comment section or asked on Hooping Live. And I wanted to make a special video about my journey or my process of being a hooper. Um, there is a video about that actually that I made a while ago um, that I documented all of my hooping journey from day one to where I was at that time and it's just amazing to see how you progress and how you grow as a hooper so it's really cool to just kind of keep some sort of diary or video blog or anything like that just to kind of go back and look at when um, you're in your further stages of life. So I, I started hooping I think in 2009. I was at my friend's house and she had picked up a hula hoop um, and she was by her pool and she started hula hooping and like doing like the ba like getting up on her shoulders or kind of doing the basic tricks like a vortex and I remember just being completely enthralled by it, just thinking that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen because when I was younger I loved to hula hoop I was always the girl at recess and I grabbed the hoops and I did creative things with them I was the one that was like doing it around her neck and you know all these all these strange things without any clue that it could be so much more. And so when I saw my friend Hoop, it was this strange moment in my life where I thought, I can do that. And I really, really want to do that. Like, I remember thinking, if I could just be a really good hula hooper, my life would be perfect. Okay, so I hope this little demonstration has helped you with a creative way of using Final Cut Pro 10 to almost make it look like you use multiple cameras for your shoot, whereas you only really used one affordable camera, in this case the FZ1000 by Panasonic, that allows you to shoot 4K footage at 30 frames a second, and also this slow motion 
120 frames per second in 1080p. And when you have 4K footage and 1080p footage, of course, you're going to want to create a timeline for your project that is 1080p. So you're going to, want to do a custom timeline at 1080p so that when you drag your 4K footage in and then your 1080p footage, when you're outputting, you're outputting the final product in 1080p because you want to output in the size of your smallest footage, if that makes any sense. So if you got 4K footage and 1080p footage and 720p footage, for example, then you would want to output 720p because you don't want to blow anything up because you're really going to lose quality. But if you use this 4K footage the way I did and the way I showed earlier where it allows you to crop in, it gives you a lot of flexibility with that 4K footage and your outputted video is still going to be 1080p, which it's still going to be pretty daggone good quality. I'm outputting most of my work now in 4K, but I am still in some cases outputting in 1080p, so it's nice to have this flexibility to zoom in if you need to. So again, find Audrey at HoopingLive.com, HoopingLive.com. Find me at CraigShip.com. And thanks very much for watching. And please subscribe to my channel and share your comments. Let me know if you like this kind of content. And let me know how you use your camera. Thanks.